Nós agora vamos para a apresentação do Jep Jepsen. Ele é diretor da associação Tetramu, sendo atualmente seu vice-chairman. Ele teve vários cargos na Tetramu desde o seu início, em 1995. A Tetramu, ou a Associação Tetra, representa 130 organizações de 30 países que estão envolvidas no desenvolvimento e na implantação do padrão global para a rádio comunicação móvel profissional, conhecido como Tetra. Sua especialidade é a segurança pública, área esta em que passou os 20 últimos anos da sua carreira. JEP é também o diretor de Relações Internacionais para a Europa, Oriente Médio e África da Motorola. Em, e fica em Bruxelas desde setembro de 1995. Sua experiência internacional cobre desde o Oriente Médio, Far East e América Latina. Ele já trabalhou nos escritórios de Chicago, Copenhagen e agora em Bruxelas. Jep é bacharelado em ciências com especialização em engenharia elétrica. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from Brussels. It's raining in Brussels, so. It's not much better than here. Um, I'm representing the Tetra Association, which is an international association of organizations who support the open standard called Tetra. There are a number of industries, all of them in the PMR world, a number of government users, and what we all have to get in common is that we want open standard, we want interoperability, we want competition, and we want the users to have a choice. And this is basically what Tetra is about. A picture of Europe where we are with uh, public safety communication. Um, you will see the dark green color, Finland, UK, Belgium, Holland, are all countries where nationwide public safety networks are operational. Meaning that all police, fire, ambulance, all government agencies are on one common shared network for that country. Allowing people to talk to each other when they need to. The squared uh, widen green dots Sweden Italy and so on are all countries where the networks are being built at the moment. And the light blue are countries where tender processes are going on and will end up with Tetra. The yellow ish, like France and Spain, have decided to go with a different technology that is not interoperable and is not open standard. There are various business models that are being used across Europe. The one I will be talking about today is what we call a COCO, which means company operated and, no, company owned, company operated. Traditionally, police communication has been government oper owned and government operated. That is also the case in some of the countries, but in in the UK, in Denmark, Austria, Portugal, Hungary, Italy, there is a partnership between operators, suppliers, and the government to establish a service to the public. And the one that I will be talking about is obviously the UK. So now the individual police organization do not have their own radio system anymore. They buy a service from an operator. The fire service don't have their own system anymore. They buy a service, and it is the same service they are buying from the operator. And so there is one shared network all over the UK. It's the largest system in the world. Uh, 3,300 base stations cover London, Scotland, and Wales. It's one big packet switch network. Uh, a base station in southern England is connected to a LAN that's connected to a WAN and connects to a base station in northern Scotland. And from when you push the push to talk button on the radio, in less than 500 milliseconds you are talking to the group, which can be spread all over England, Scotland and Wales, fully encrypted. Today there's about 180,000 radio users on that network. 
And originally it started out as police only, but now, luckily enough, ambulance and fire is part of that service as well. The service is being delivered by a company called Airwave, which is part of the O2 group, which is owned by Telefonica. And Airwave has a contract with the government of the UK for, as you can see, something like three and a half billion pounds for 20 years. It is four years for establishing the network from year 2000, and then 15 years of guaranteed service on the network. The users are paying a fee per radio per month. Originally funding came from the central government to establish a certain level of coverage across the UK, but each, each local county could then buy additional coverage so that they could get specifically the service that they wanted in their local areas. And therefore, prices will vary for the, for the terminals accordingly to what coverage service that is requested. So what is Airwave? It is all about coverage. When you talk to a policeman, what is most important for him when he has his radio in his hand? It is no, for him to know that he has contact back home to his base. So coverage, coverage, coverage. And it has to be there all the time. Because why are all these governments of Europe investing so much in dedicated radio networks when there are millions, no, not millions, but many, many cellular networks where you can talk in also? Because cellular networks do not deliver the coverage that is required, and it doesn't deliver the resilience that is required. Whenever something bad happens, whether it is your football team that is losing, or it is a disaster, everybody is, obviously it delivers voice, obviously it delivers data. Um, I will not spend too much on this. Uh, it is dedicated system for the emergency services. It's built in the 380 to 400 megahertz band. It is obviously a Motorola system, but the terminals that are for sale on this system is from more than five different companies. So the users have a choice on which terminals they want to have on the network, and they buy those in open tender. The system also has an open interface into control rooms so that the control room vendors can offer the best they have and connect in to the system as well. Airwave now covers all of England, Scotland and Wales and all the police forces are using it. Ambulance services are taking it into use as we talk, the same as the fire operations. And this dedicated hot standby network gives you 100% network resilience. It also have a dedicated sub-network for air-to-ground communication. So now the fixed-wing aircraft, the helicopters, can now talk directly in the same talk groups with the people on the, on the ground whom they are working together with, something that were not possible before. And there are 170 uh, control rooms across the country. Why a dedicated network apart from resilience? There will f certainly be people that will be saying, well, we have a very good GSM network um, it will be cheaper to make that more resilient, uh, make sure there are extra capacity set aside for emergency services, adding battery backup to sites. Why is it that all the governments of Europe have all come to the same conclusion, to build a dedicated network? Because this is a valid question, and each country have paid millions of dollars to consultancy companies analyzing why can't we take the existing GSM system or UMTS system and use that for emergency services. And they have all come to the same conclusion. It does not deliver the functions and the quality of service that this is required. 
And you see the functionality up here, talk groups, private call, encryption, telephony, data. Today, a police radio in Europe has color screen allowing us to send pictures directly from the control room out on his walkie-talkie with a picture of the missing child so that you have that distributed immediately to the emergency services. You can, the radios have built-in GPS receivers so that when an officer is in distress and presses his emergency button, the control room knows exactly where he is. And something that for a police officer five years ago was unthinkable. He didn't want his control room to know where he was. Since September 11, since Madrid, since the bombings in London, that has changed completely. Now the police officer wants the control room to know where he is at any given time for his own personal safety. So things are changing. So the, the, the 25,000 radios in use with the Metropolitan Police of London, for example, all have built-in GPS modules so that they know where they are. Th that gives the police organization a completely different tool to optimize their organization because now they can use that information to see where their patrolling officers are deployed across the city and where they are thin on patrols and where there are too many because there is a good offer from the local McDonald's store for free coffee to policemen. So the new technology enables the organizations to become much more efficient and deliver a better service to the public for the taxpayer's money. Obviously, radios get lost, stolen, they get zapped on the network, they are not on the network anymore, and therefore journalists, I'm sorry, cannot listen in to the police communication as they could before. Um, there are statements from ambulance services that just the mere fact that they can now start life-saving uh, efforts so much faster has already saved more than 100 lives in that one ambulance area alone because of more efficient communication and better uh, work. A radio can be made to transmit automatically, remotely, meaning that if you have a conversation with your boss and he has, he has told you that you have to do your job better, and he goes back out and dictates a report to the human resources, uh, you can actually go into the control room and remotely key his button so that you can listen what he is dictating to the system, if you are allowed to do so then. Obviously, it's not meant for that. It's meant for a radio to be stolen, uh, and the police can then remotely listen to what happens around the area where that stolen police car or wherever is taken by criminals and thereby giving you a good opportunity to control that situation as well. Um, the police, as I say, is, is, is covered, fully operational in England. Uh, there are uh, coverage in the air, in ports, everywhere. Applications are being added all the time on the network. Now a policeman has a PDA with a built-in Tetra modem. He can do his reporting from a traffic incident directly in the field. He can take a picture of the situations. He can attach the pictures to his report that he does in the field and doesn't have to go back to the police station to file a trivial traffic incident report. So instead of sitting and using an hour to do a report in the office, he can spend that hour being effective on the street, delivering good police service to the community. All of this is done under a public-private partnership arrangement, which means that uh, Airwave, funds the whole thing, 
builds the whole thing, operates the whole thing, and is being compensated by a monthly fee from the radios that is on the network. So there are 180,000 users on the network today. Um, and the, it's not just the blue light services that are on. There are more than 60 government organizations that are allowed to be on that network. Electricity companies are being allowed to get onto the network because when a natural disaster happens, like a storm, police and emergency services need to communicate closely with the gas supply, electricity supply, water supply, and others to, to establish the, the society back to normal again. So therefore, they are being allowed on the network as well. And this is all for the purpose of interoperability. The, the ambulances in, in Wales and Scotland uh, actually have also now agreed to be on, on the network, so it all goes very well. Let me spend a couple of minutes on uh, a couple of incidents that were last year in England. England was the host for the G8 summit. Um, the whole world watched it uh, up in Scotland. There were two antenna sites, and the police moved more than 3,000 policemen up to police that event. Lots of public demonstrations, lots of incidents around it, and there were, as you can see, 1.5 million push-to-talks on these two antenna sites just in that time frame. So that is an enormous amount of traffic. And we had never known that the police wanted to put 3,000 radios onto one antenna site at one given time, but it proved that it worked well. Now, obviously, Scottish police had asked their colleagues from all over England and Wales to come and help them. And they all brought their equipment with them and their radio equipment. And while they were up in, in Scotland, the bombings in London took place. And there were hundreds of London policemen in Scotland. Suddenly, they needed to go back to England immediately. But while they were in Scotland, they could listen to the talk groups where the com local communication in London took place while they were in Scotland. So while they were being transported to, to the airplanes, airlifting them back to London, they were listening to what was going on in London. And while they flew down to London, immediately they got out of the plane, they listened again to the talk groups happening there. So they were in the network all the time and could be effective immediately they came back to London. Obviously, London police called in their local colleagues from around London, all of them bringing their Tetra radio, all of them communicating with each other because they are on one, on one seamless network. And the network delivered, uh, GSM networks overloaded, were taken down, risk of that GSM networks were being used to trigger uh, bombs like in Madrid. Uh, it's very easy to open up a cell phone nowadays and find the vibrator and then use that, those two wires for the vibrator to trigger a bomb. So all you need to do is send an SMS or call that one phone and you have a remote detonating device. So therefore, GSM phones were taken off the air. For that same reason, you cannot have public safety on a GSM network, because then you could not take that off the air when you have such a risk. And the service worked well, and uh, um, everybody was pleased. The, the choices that nations have to make when they establish radio networks like these is how to split the cost between the participating organizations. Do you want the government to own the network and fund the network from a central point? That is difficult because traditionally, yes, the federal police 
have been funded from a federal purse, but local police have been funded locally. The emergency services, the fire service locally, how do you find out who shall pay what in a future common networks? That has been a big discussion in all of the countries where this has been implemented. So do you have a national government-owned operator like some companies ha countries have, or do you have a commercial operator that UK have? But it all needs to have agreed service level agreements where everybody knows what to do and w that they make sure that they get the service that they have contracted for. In Airwave, for example, you can buy, as a user, you can buy various levels of services. So you can go in and choose and say, okay, I want um, 30 minutes of talk time every day, or I want 90 minutes talk time every day, and thereby ma making sure that you get exactly what you need. So there is all kinds of pricing models available for the users as well when they have been approved to be on the network. That was my presentation. I hope it was of interest to you. My little slide here at the end is just a reminder. This is serious business, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, because don't take communication for the emergency services too easy because life is at stake if it doesn't work. So thank you very much. Thank you.